Hey everyone, today we are in sunny San Jose, Costa Rica as part of our Central America micro recycling tour. And we came to visit TRS, the recycling studio, because these guys have totally nailed the process to make recycled sheets. And I know that many of you out there are still struggling to make really good, top quality recycled sheets. So I really hope that in today's video, you're gonna learn a ton on how to improve your recycling process. So Costa Rica is a small country in Central America, and they're really squeezed between these two oceans, the Pacific on one side and the Atlantic on the other. And over the years, Costa Rica has become known as a sustainability champion. So during the 70s and 80s, Costa Rica was really under a deforestation crisis. And that's when the government really stepped in. They got rid of the military and they used all of this money left over to put into conservation projects. And now just a few decades later, the country is a natural marvel. And a natural marvel that runs on 99.99% renewable energy which even though it's a small population is still a great achievement. However, as many other countries, when it comes to plastic, Costa Rica still has a long way to go. Unfortunately, just not an easy nut to crack. In 2023, still only 6.6% of all waste is being recycled, which is crazy low, even for a developing country. Is it a developed country? So to try and improve the situation, the Costa Rica government started a program called Ecolones, where it pays people digital money to bring their waste in their recycling centers. And that seemed to have worked pretty decently to an extent. In the first month of operation, over 40,000 Costa Ricans brought their waste to the recycling facilities. On top of that, they also brought a bunch of laws to ban single-use plastic from Costa Rica, which of course is the best possible step to make your country more sustainable. All right, but enough beaches and tropical marvels. Let's go and see what the guys at TRS are doing. Hey guys! Hi! Hey! Hey man! Alright, so here we are with Oliver and Olivia. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they are the recycled studio and let me tell you they're doing incredible, incredible work using the sheet press and making some of the best sheets that I've ever seen. They are perfectionists to a level that is maybe unhealthy. <laughs> However, that's probably what you need to make really good sheets. So I'm not gonna hand it over to them. They're gonna give us a little tour of the space and show us what they do here. Hi, uh, my name's Olivia. I'm one half of TRS, also known as the Recycle Studio. And I'm Oliver, the other half. We're both actually from the UK, but we live in San Jose, Costa Rica. We were concerned about plastic waste, so we decided to get involved in some precious plastics. Do you wanna come and join us for a tour? Let's go. In TRS, we focus mainly on B2B. So our clients are interior designers, architects, and we sell them um, our finished products, which are just uh, a laminate of a meter by a meter in four different thicknesses. And so we hand the materials over to them to really create materials or products that really showcase what can be done with uh, the materials and precious plastic. So we produce in four different thicknesses. We, um, our thicknesses actually come in inches. So it's a quarter of an inch, half an inch, three quarters and one inch. And we work with a couple different plastics. We try and focus on plastics that maybe have low recycling rates or a bit more challenging to recycle. Um, this is an example of GPPS, so general use polystyrene, um, that there was a massive surplus um, of in the industry. And so we were able to absorb it. We also work with HIPS, which is high impact polystyrene. Um, occasionally HDPE, um, specifically if it can't be recycled in other ways, and sometimes PP. Our favourite one to work is HIPS. We get really good uh, quality from it. It's really lovely to kind of like uh, do post-production with, to cut, to CNC. So I'd say that that one's my favourite. In terms of finish, maybe GPPS, because it feels like a little bit like glass. And when Olivia says that they come out good, my God, it's perfect. <laughs> so in TRS, we work with collections. We have the base collection and the contemporary collection. So our base collection is mainly comprised of uh, plastics that um, we're able to source quite easily and therefore regularly. Um, it's a consistent collection usually. Uh, sometimes there's variation in the tones, naturally because it's recycled plastic. Um, and they're also way more classic. So color palettes that may be uh, easier for our clients to put in, in more like neutral spaces. Um, this is a super popular one of ours called Paloma. And then we've got the contemporary collection 
which is often like limited edition plastics. We might only have enough plastic for 10 sheets or 20 sheets and then that's it. Um, and they're a lot more fun. So a lot more exciting colors, um, like this one. This is a favorite called Bosque, which means forest in Spanish. So as well as our base and contemporary collections, we also uh, offer the opportunity to make bespoke materials. So that's a chance for designers to come in and to create their own material. Perhaps it's to do with the brand or a color tone of a particular project. And so we have all of the plastics that are in our workshop divided here into their boxes and into their family groups. And you can make really cool materials. Like these are some of the examples that we have of the bespoke materials that we've done so far for clients. So our clients right now, they're pretty much interior designers and architects that have been inspired by our materials and want to create finished projects. So we've had things from tabletops to kitchen surfaces to lamps um, to skateboards, anything really that they've been able to do with our materials. So this is our hot press and we've got two cooling presses. Um, our hot press is actually on wheels and on rails. Um, the reason we do this is to get the best quality essentially. So we like to leave the sheets cooling for a good amount of time in the cold press and we don't like to disturb them. Um, so then when we put a new sheet in and there's a sheet cooling, we run it along and we put it in the next press. Ideally, um, for optimum quality and production time of one hot press, we would have three cold presses. Um, and that has really guaranteed an excellent surface quality for us. We had attempted to stack sheets on top of each other. We found, depending on the plastic, that it was uh, creating different issues. Uh, we had one example of blistering. So essentially not enough cooling time had happened and it makes kind of Im imperfect marks on, on the top of the surface. And two, you get the kind of the bumpy effect um, if you kind of release repressure and release. So for optimum quality, you really kind of keep the same amount of pressure from the beginning all the way through until the plastic set. So we call one sheet at a time. So we started the process of trying to build these machines in 2020. We actually got the setup built for the beginning of 2021. We were super lucky. Costa Rica has lots of like governmental funds available for kind of like green technology and startups focused on waste management. So we were able to access some of that. Um, the first round was $10,000 and that's kind of when we got like our basic setup. And then we did a second round of funding to do some upgrades because we were noticing that although the, everything was functioning well, we weren't really hitting the quality marks that we were hoping and expecting. Um, a couple of those things was like the investment in the second sheet press, uh, cold press. Um, we also realized that we wanted to kind of like do a bit more experiments of different types of metals for the molds. So we, we've practiced with different types of aluminium, different types of stainless steel, different types of iron. And that kind of gives different qualities depending on the type of plastic that you use. So that was kind of a, a big investment of time in R&D. And also we, um, we realized that it was really important in the hot press to have uh, the sheets that were pressing the molds uh, for them to be thick and of a really high heat resistance. And that really has helped with the thickness um, distribution and quality in our sheet materials. So we get most of our plastic from post-industrial sources uh, rather than post-consumer at the moment, although it's definitely something we want to work towards. One of the reasons is that um, with the shredder, which is how we started, we found that the process took quite a long time in order to get the quality that we wanted. That's like washing the plastic, separating the plastic, taking everything off. Um, it was quite a heavy investment in time. And then we realized that actually it was probably better to help the industry that's already here. So there were already people shredding plastic and we were able to add value to their business as well as ours. So ensuring quality control of plastic has, one, has been one of the, the things that has really allowed us to produce the sheets that we're able to do. Um, and basically that comes from making sure that we have, um, when we use a sheet, we normally use it from one particular provider. So we know that all of the plastic that comes in all of these sacks are from one provider and that once they're mixed together, they're going to produce good quality. Uh, so the process of getting um, 
the good quality sheet, which we defined as a good surface texture and a good thickness and also good texture inside. Without Only Holes was a really long process, a lot of R&D um, over the course of probably a year, if not a little bit more, in which also we were simultaneously thinking, okay, we need to maybe do some upgrades to the machine, maybe we can try different temperatures, maybe we can di uh, try different pressures. And so it was a really long process but we are pretty happy with the results that we have at the moment. So in TRS, we are research addicts. We love a good bit of R&D. Um, and so apart from like really focusing on the technical quality of our sheets, we also want to always explore the boundaries of the material. Okay, so CNC, uh, probably a pretty familiar technique for many people. Um, achieves great results. One of our favorites has been the 3D effect that we've managed to achieve. Um, and essentially, you can create added textures onto the plastics. The second technique that we wanted to research after the CNC was a water jet, which is essentially a jet of water that's mixed with sand and produces these cuts. Now you can't do textures like you can do in CNC, but what we thought was interesting was that the detail of some of the things that we could do uh, was far more precise. So whereas you're limited with CNC with the size of the piece, the cutting piece that you're using, here you can go up to a millimeter in detail. So after we got nice cuts in our material, one of the other things we wanted to do was explore some of the uh, techniques that are normally used in woodworking on our plastics. Uh, so these are uh, samples that we did uh, with a carpenter here in Costa Rica to do really beautiful joins for corners here as well. And as perhaps a limitant for some of the people of the size of our materials, which are a meter by a meter, um, we worked out how to do joins. And so I think the biggest join we've had so far has been about 1.8 meters long. We're lucky that the glues that we use or the plastics that we use, um, there's a glue for it. Uh, whereas actually most glues, the chances are they're not going to work on uh, materials like HDP and PP. Uh, there are special glues you can buy, we haven't tried with them, um, but uh, the glues that we use, you can see here, do a pretty good job. So with uh, HDPE, what we did is we tried to stick it together using heat. Uh, so we got a heat gun out and we put it together and it was a really cool effect, but I will admit that this was about five layers thick before it reduced itself to two. And so it was quite a difficult technique really long, uh, we weren't able to do it. With HDP and PP though, you can stick it to other materials. So here um, was a little uh, test that we did. This was obviously stuck to wood, and this is an HDP material, and most glues will work for that. The problem comes is when you're trying to stick HDP and PP together. So, corners. Um, we've tried a few different techniques, and there were there are plus and minuses to all of them. So we've done the bending technique, we, we really got it down, but what we found was the whole process of building a mold and, and kind of like the resources used was not only uh, expensive, but also we ended up with the surplus of molds. So it's something that we are able to do, but we don't do it so much. We had a client who wanted to have a right angle from one piece as opposed to having two bits cut and joining, they wanted it all to be one. So what we did is we created an incision and then used the same technique. And it creates a right angle from one piece. And then finally, we also had requests of people that they wanted to have a corner, but actually it was out of their means doing the bending. So we actually created almost like a fake corner by adding a corner piece and two laminates and CNC routering it. So the materials we, we produce, we say we produce for sustainable design. And for us, that goes a little bit beyond just producing materials that are made from recycled plastics. So we're really lucky in Costa Rica to be able to use the, uh, the electricity grid, which is powered by 99.9% .9 renewable energy. Costa Rica is really big on the, on the green image. And, and we also make sure that any plastics that are left over from our, pro our processes, or perhaps if it's a material or a small item that's no longer wanted, uh, we're able to recycle that again. So either we're able to put it into our sheets, we also do that with the excess of our, of our production, um, but also with any materials that come back from our CNC provider, we make sure that they're responsibly um, 
reused again to make sure that they maintain a value within a circular economy. All right, here we are at the end of the video. And it's always a bit frustrating to tell you how good these sheets are because, you know, in, on camera, it doesn't really pay justice to the incredible beauty of this material. All right, guys, that's it with this video. I really, really hope that you learned something. And we'll see you next video. Ciao. Ciao.